ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Moto Mangi on this beautiful blue skied summer day. There isn't a cloud in the sky hardly. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of moto vlogging, that's kind of what I want to discuss today actually. Because a couple of days ago, another moto vlogger named Road Reality, he posted a video where he talked about how moto vloggers are a rare breed. And when I saw that video posted, I thought, that's not true. There's more moto vloggers today than ever, in my opinion. That's how it seems anyway. But after watching Road Reality's video, I kind of a, a, made me think quite a bit, actually. I think, yeah, you know what? He's probably right, actually. But moto vloggers today, uh, most moto vloggers aren't the same as what they used to be. Moto vlogging has changed over the past few years. And I guess I should discriminate between mode of logging, classic mode of logging, and modern mode of logging, I guess. Maybe that's the best way to put it. I wanted to say true mode of loggers, but calling someone a true mode of logger and then someone else not a true mode of logger sounds like it's, you know, not very kind. So I'll, I'll differentiate it as classic mode of logging and modern mode of logging. And in that regard, I think John's right. Uh, John is Road Reality. Road Reality is his motor vlogging channel's name, but his, his real name's John. I'll try to call him Road Reality from now on so you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and the difference between classic motor vlogging and modern motor vlogging is, wow, that building fell down. Holy hell. Classic motor vlogging is basically what I think of as simply hopping on your bike and filming yourself riding and talking about things while you're riding. Basically vlogging while riding a motorcycle. That's what I think of as classic motor vlogging. That's how motor vlogging started. That's the kind of motor vlogging I used to watch over years and years ago before I started my own channel. Whereas modern motor vlogging has gotten, okay, say that without the voice squeal. <laughs> Whereas modern motor vlogging has gotten to be more aimed towards the YouTube algorithm in a way. And you'll see this, most of the big moto vlogging channels do modern moto vlogging. And by that I mean, it's not just riding and talking and filming yourself while riding. It's also throwing in B-roll along the way and some walking segments, some face you know, video while you're walking and talking. off the bike shots, mixed in with your footage, that kind of thing. That's what most modern, large channel successful moto vloggers do. And they do that because the YouTube algorithm likes those kind of videos, so. And not only that, those kind of videos appeal to a, a wider audience too. Like non-motorcycle riders can watch a video that has B-roll and editing splices and different segments so that it catches your attention more. And that's why YouTube prefers those kind of videos because it's all about getting the viewer's attention. But classic mode of vlogging is a little different. Classic mode of vlogging is simply hopping on the bike, riding and filming yourself while you're riding. Talking from the seat of the bike while you're riding. And that's the kind of channel Road Reality has mostly. He's what I consider a classic mode of vlogger. But Kelly Seven's another example. He's definitely a classic mode of vlogger. Bodine 52, Harley Day Rider, Bronco Rides. I consider all of them pretty much classic motor vloggers. And all of them have been doing it for a long time too, except, except Road Reality. He's fairly new, but he puts out lots of videos. <laughs> I try to keep up with Road Reality's videos. I try to watch all of them, but man, sometimes it's hard to keep up. There are times where I, I miss a week or two and I have to go back and blitz through a bunch of his videos to catch up. So we the the sense between classic motor vlogging and modern motor vlogging, Road Reality is kind of right. Classic motor vlogging is becoming a rare breed. Some of the older channels that have been around for a while are still doing it, but most new motor vloggers aren't going down that road. They're aiming their channels more towards modern motor vlogging, more towards YouTube algorithm, more towards trying to garner as much viewer attention as possible and grow the channel as fast as possible. And for someone like, you know, for people doing motovlogging as a career, as a job, 
for a living, like her two wheels, doodle on a motorcycle, blockhead, uh, Fort 9, that makes sense for them. You know, they're trying to not just do motovlogging for the sake of motovlogging, they're doing YouTube to earn a living, to make money. So in that regard, you would want to edit your videos to appeal to the widest audience possible. But most classic model vloggers aren't doing it for the money or for the fame or for to make a living. They're doing motor vlogging because they enjoy it. Most classic motor vloggers are motor vlogging because they want to, not because they have to or because they have to pay bills, that kind of thing. And yeah, it does narrow down the niche they they appeal to. I mean, classic motor vlogging pretty much appeals only to motorcycle riders. And more than that, motorcycle riders watching YouTube. <laughs> so it even gets narrowed down further. I like my channel, for example, Moto Mangi. When I started Moto Mangi, my intention was the classic moto vlog. That's what I had in mind when I started my channel. I really didn't have a game plan per se. I just wanted to film myself while riding my motorcycle and make videos on YouTube and see what happened pretty much. And I did that for a time. And then I got more into the Riding for or riding for a purpose, but motor vlogging for a purpose, meaning like the road spotlights and my scenic destinations, and I've done a few bike reviews, so my videos gradually became more purpose oriented rather than riding oriented. And that's not true because the road spotlights are all about riding the roads on spotlighting, but the purpose is to highlight the road, not just to ride and talk and talk about whatever I'm, I'm thinking about. I mean, that's what classic motor vlogging used to be. They just would ride and talk and film themselves without much of a purpose other than to ride and talk and film themselves. <laughs> but modern motor vlogging is more about creating a story, creating an engaging story that appeals to lots of viewers. So a lot of modern motor vloggers are making the kind of content that the YouTube algorithm favors. For that reason, motor vlogging has gravitated away from what it used to be and has become something different nowadays. But even still, the the large modern motor vlogging channels, there are still hints of classic motor vlogging in their content. Like her two wheels, she, she still does a lot of riding and talking, but she'll mix it in with, you know, some footage of her getting ready to ride, some throw in some melancholy music or something and beauty shots of locations or coffee or scenery, that kind of thing. Like Doodle on a motorcycle, she just made a video in the past month or two about the dragon, the tail of the dragon. And it had a lot of video of her riding her motorcycle while talking, but the majority of that video was voiceover while she was riding. So footage of her riding, but voiceovers from the editing desk of her talking about things she was seeing while riding. And a lot of speeded up shots of her riding the dragon, and then a lot of shots of like Deal's Gap, the Tree of Shame, and her eating her food in the at Deal's Gap and getting ready in the hotel, getting gas, fighting gas, running across, you know, road blockages on the Terra Hall Skyway. So it wasn't just doodle riding and talking. It was a lot of B-roll and a lot of fancy edits and a lot of music thrown in and that kind of stuff, which is good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because that video of Doodles did very well. It has like 350,000 views, I think, as of this, as the time I'm recording this, in like a two month period, which is pretty awesome. I mean, it might be one of Doodles' best videos she's ever did, as far as getting viewers and stuff. That might be one of her most successful videos. So, it worked, you know? That style of editing worked for her, and it, it did its job. It got viewers, and it got clicks for her channel, and it made her money, because she's now a full-time Motor vlogger, YouTuber, but it's not classic motor vlogging either. It's modern motor vlogging, and that's what a lot of the big channels do nowadays. They're trying to tell an engaging story rather than simply motor vlogging. But they'll throw in bits of motor vlogging inside their their story, so they're still motor vlogging, but they're more they more adapted the video style, the editing style towards the YouTube algorithm. And maybe that's what motor vlogging is, should be nowadays. Maybe they're correct. Maybe motor vlogging as an art form has evolved past classic motor vlogging today. But I still enjoy classic motor vlogging. <laughs> and Road Reality's video got me thinking and about my own channel a lot, like retrospectively. 
introspectively. Is that the right word? It got me thinking about myself, about Moto Mangi, and how I look down my, I have a spreadsheet full of videos I want to make in the future for my channel, and, and the majority of the entries into my spreadsheet for Moto Mangi's future videos are road spotlights or scenic destinations or that kind of stuff. I've got roads all over the eastern coast that I want to highlight and do road spotlights on. But as I look through my spreadsheet, I'm like, I don't have a lot of just simply riding and talking. I don't have a lot of topics ready to go or that I have planned where I want to just ride and film myself talking while I'm riding. Classic motor vlogging. So I kind of, and I want to kind of, I think I want to do more classic motor vlogging. Like I do enjoy the road spotlights and viewers like them. Of course, they seem to anyway. But I really do enjoy classic motor vlogging as well. And I think I want to do more classic motor vlogging from now on. Get back to kind of what I wanted Moto Mangi to be a little bit. Now it's not to say I'm going to stop doing road spotlights. Nothing of the sort. I love doing road spotlights. I find them fun. I have a whole crap load of them planned. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. But I want to start throwing in some classic motor vlogs now and then, too. I mean, this is a classic motor vlog where I'm riding and talking. And I look at back at my channel, the history of my channel over the past two years, I've done quite a few classic motor vlogs, but, but also I do enjoy flexing my editing skills now and then and doing other styles videos. I think Moto Bank is more about a variety of moto vlogging styles rather than just one moto vlogging style. <laughs> oh, this bike is so much fun to ride. <laughs> but this curve comes up fast. I gotta slow down now. <laughs> it's a nice curve, it's wicked. You gotta be careful there. What a beautiful day. See, I gotta do more of this. More just riding and filming and talking and enjoying the ride while I'm filming myself. I feel like lately I've gotten more into the planning out videos, like shots and edits and trying to, trying to throw in B-roll once in a while. And it's a lot more work for one to make videos like that. But I'm not sure I enjoy it anymore. But I will still do it once in a while, because like I said, I like doing a variety of videos. I like editing a variety of videos. I like challenging my editing skills creatively. But that's why I motovlog, really, because I, I find it, I find the whole editing process fun. But I find making different styles of videos fun, too. But Real Reality's video got me thinking quite a bit. It was good food for thought. I'll put a link to his video in the description. And I'll link it here in the card, too, up top, if you want to check it out. recommend watching Road Reality's channel as well. He's a good motor vlogger. If you enjoy classic motor vlogging, you like watching him then. He's a character. <laughs> and then I saw a day later McKaylee 7 made a response video to Road Reality's video. McKaylee 7 is also a classic motor vlogger. He's also a very interesting character. <laughs> and maybe that's a good takeaway from this. Like if you're an interesting character Personality-wise, classic motor vlogging can do very well for you then, I guess. Because people will watch it just for your personality then. Maybe that's why I should I should do less classic motor vlogs. Maybe I'm not so interesting after all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I see a lot of these modern motor vloggers, they put their camera on tripods and they walk towards the camera or they film themselves getting on their bike or riding away from their camera. And you know, if you're a motor vlogger, then you know that they've got to turn around right back and get their tripod before they keep going. I mean... From a motor vlogging point of view, if you know how to motor vlog and what, what's involved in doing it, shots like that seem silly because they just gotta ride back and get their they get their gear. <laughs> Whereas classic motor vlogging, you know what they're doing. They're just riding and talking. It feels more natural. Maybe that's why I like it more. It feels more natural from a rider's point of view. Oh well, it was a good topic. So on that note, I'm going to turn the cameras off and. Enjoy this blue sky day, because it's awesome outside. Good temperature, light breeze. On that note, thanks for watching.
leave any comments down below. Let me know what you think about. Are, are motovloggers a rare breed nowadays? Is classic motovlogging dying off? Are there less classic motovloggers today and more mo modern motovloggers? And which do you prefer? Do you prefer simply riding and talking, vlogging while you're riding kind of videos? Or do you prefer the highly edited, curtailed for YouTube algorithm videos from a, mo a motovlogging point of view? Let me know what you think. And while you're at it, let me know what you think about, mo about my channel, Moto Mangy too. Should I do more classic motor vlogs like this where I just talk and ride or should I do more road spotlights or should I try and make more modern motor vlogs with fancy b-roll and all kind of fancy YouTube trick stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you think. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take care everyone, ride safe and see you next time. 24 minutes, wow, that went longer than I thought. <laughs> I rambled on for 24 minutes on that one topic. I'll have to cut quite a bit out of this video, I think it's too long. How did I get 24 minutes out of that? I'm sure there's a lot of fluff and stuff in there I can cut out.